Hello, I am Chaplain Joyce Jacobs. I practice at Unitas Hospital in Centurion, South Africa as a trauma interventionist, behavioral specialist and a clinical spiritual and pastoral counselor. I am an international mentor and speaker and renowned for outstanding results in trauma therapy through Jesus Christ working in me. Analyzing how your brain reacts to trauma is the key to understand how trauma impacts your body. What is trauma? The real definition of trauma may surprise you. Perhaps an armed robbery or an accident losing a limb may be called a traumatic situation. But that is only a single perspective on trauma. The definition to trauma is something we all have in common. Our survival instincts. Is trauma the understanding of my traumatic experiences? Your instincts for survival is defining trauma, regardless of your conscious awareness and understanding. It is a chemical impact. How can trauma be defined by my instincts? Through my experiences with many trauma patients, I have compiled a new definition for trauma. Trauma is defined as any negative life event that occurred in a relative position of helplessness and left a mark that is still preventing you from proactively creating a better life. When the human brain experienced trauma, any negative event in a relative state of helplessness, an instinctive process of protection is engaged. The key to understanding trauma is finding out how the brain responds to helplessness and how helplessness engages our natural instincts of survival. When your brain experiences any negative event leading to a negative consequence while possibly leaving its mark in a relative state of helplessness to the event itself, Instinctive neurochemistry turns on the survival strategies of fights, flights and fight reactions, which are then sent throughout the body. These flight and fight instinctive reactions of protection serve to help survive the event, which was ultimately perceived as potentially life-threatening by your brain. A list of possible negative life events that could put you in a position of relative helplessness and shock is as follow. The problem with trauma is that we understand that we need an automatic instinctive part of our brain constantly assessing for any life-threatening situations. The trouble with trauma experiences is that the human brain has a way of learning to associate many aspects and smaller events with the actual trauma and then re-engages the neurochemical processes of protection over and over, even long after the actual threat is over. The process is normal for the human being and happens to all of us and every time. The following habits are interrelated and are common patterns associated with trauma that we form as part of our new behavior after the experience of traumatic events. Habits of trauma is chronic pain, anxiety, depression, fear, tension, anger and rage, post-traumatic stress disorder, dependency, learned helplessness. Trauma habits create chronic conditions. The habits of trauma lead to patterns that have a dramatic physiological impact in our bodies and ultimately dictate the quality of life. Trauma survivors experience on a regular basis that the neurochemistry and helplessness is re-engaged so often that the maintenance of flight and fight becomes a habit. Belief systems that we use to perform can also help to maintain this state of trauma. And maintaining a permanent state of trauma inevitably lead to the development of many different chronic conditions. Every chronic condition has a different doctor, contraindicative medicine and comes with no hope for healing. 
When you maintain a state of trauma through trauma habits or through the social behavior that you have embraced as a part of your life, most of the time the trigger was all, well, a hoax, just a false report. How does the brain's response to trauma impact the body's response to trauma? Your modern brain or your frontal cortex is responsible for problem solving, memory, language, judgment, impulse control and reasoning. Your primal brain or your hind brain and medulla is responsible for survival, drive and instinct. When your primal brain is engaged, your sympathetic response of fight and flight, your modern brain is not working much and are temporarily offline. The part of the brain that controls the survival instincts or your autonomic nervous system also controls every system in the body. Systems in the body that are being controlled by the autonomous nervous system is your cardiac system, muscular system, excretory systems, circulatory systems, reproductive system, endocrine system, nervous system, skeletal system, immune system, respiratory systems, digestive system, and your skin system. The autonomous nervous system micromanages the interrelationships between all the body systems around the clock. And when the autonomic nervous system engages the survival instincts of flight and fight, every system in the body receives instruction to be prepared for critical action. When there's no real or perceived threat any longer, the autonomic nervous system shuts off the survival instincts of fight and flight and allow your physiology to return to a balanced state of homeostasis. But what happens when you cannot or do not escape the threat? What happens when there are shock added to the state? Then the autonomous nervous system becomes frozen in a state of flight and fight still considering the trauma to be an active threat to your survival. Frozen in fight and flight is serious when your autonomic nervous system freezes in a state of instinctively driven fight and flight, just like this iceberg. What you see is only the tip of what is really going on underneath the surface and also in every system of your body. When you are frozen in fight and flight, instinctive protection, your brain drives your body hard in full speed and sometimes even in overdrive. When you are permanently engaged in overdrive, as expected, over time your body starts to break down. Resulting in chronic conditions, showing up in multiple systems within your body, which become habituated within your brain, your body and your life. The habits of trauma cause high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, stroke, COPD, mood disorders, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis, endometriosis, Crohn's disease, MS, epilepsy, GERD and many more. It is clear. The habits of trauma lead to patterns that have a dramatic impact on the physiology of our bodies and ultimately dictate the quality of our lives. Maintenance of high stress survival lifestyles cause us to show trauma habits. This leads to shock and traumatic events and get us frozen in a state of fight and flight. And this is when we are diagnosed with trauma type 1, trauma type 2, chronic trauma or complex trauma. Chronic diseases is caused by all of this. And this leads us to permanent illness. How can old trauma re-engage the fight and flight instinctive mechanisms of the autonomous nervous system today? Think about this, you were in an auto accident where the truck in front of you dropped freight on your car. You were hurt badly. And now reliving the experience of the accident every time you have to drive by a truck. Fear that it could happen again, 
get you stuck at home out of fear to drive. Or think of how your body reacts just before an examination, when you think of your past failures and consequences of bad results. When we relive trauma, our bodies react in a predictable pattern. We have an elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure, shortness of breath, butterflies in your stomach, a dry mouth, clammy hands, tension, stress, chronic pain patterns, poor focus, poor decision making, digestive problems, avoidance behaviors, and emotional overload and reactions. So why are these patterns predictable and universal for all human beings? Because they represent the impact of the instinctive fight and flight responses of protection within the human body. Now this is a shocker. Each time these reactions are re-engaged, they actually become reinforced and a bigger trigger, resulting in the formation of trauma, life habits and permanent illness. How can we break the cycle of trauma? Result-driven trauma therapy is number one. Counseling, coaching and mentoring, and creating and building a new trauma-free lifestyle. Trauma therapy is applicable in the following cases for in-hospital trauma. Patients showing slow progress towards healing, Patients with a history of trauma, intubated patients, resuscitation, emergency surgeries and procedures, also where there's planned major surgery, oncology, and end of life guidance and bereavement. Now the advantages of in-hospital trauma therapy is that trauma therapy naturally optimize the fastest measurable recovery for illness and surgical trauma. Traumatized patients recover significantly slower. Trauma therapy helps the body to return to homeostasis. And when a patient's body is in homeostasis, that patient can proactively and positively take part and contribute to the healing process. Traumatized patients is high risk for inflammation, sepsis, new complications and negligence claims. Patients that recover fast and measurable significantly reduce the risk for ERC. And trauma therapy in the multidisciplinary team ensure a positive and happy patient and a family. It creates a legacy of excellence. My vision is changing the face of medicine to create sustainable health. Thomas Edison once said, The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct the patient in the care and maintenance of the human frame, in diet and the cause and prevention of the disease. You are welcome to visit us on our website www.traumacenturian.co.za or on our Facebook page, Medical and Mental Counseling Practice.